Hi, and welcome to the Backshop Clinic Live. We're at the Quinty Model Railway Show in Belleville, Canada. Normally on the Backshop Clinic, we do this in studio, but this weekend we decided to try an experiment to bring the Backshop Clinic out to a model railway show so that the public can see what we're doing. If this experiment works, we'll be taking it on the road, so maybe we'll see you at a train show near you. Hey everybody, it's your old pal Lionel Strang and I'm here on Train Masters TV once again and today I'm with Robin... Tilukdar. Tilukdar? Yes. That's an interesting name. What's the heritage of that name, Robin? My father's from India. Oh, okay. Excellent. So now, what, today we're standing here, in, obviously in front of, or behind, a module of some sort. Yes. It's a module of? The Pine Street Spur. The Pine Street CN Industrial Branch. A C a Canadian National. Yes. CN is Canadian National. Yep. In St. Catharines, Ontario. St. Catharines, Ontario, which is halfway between Toronto, Ontario. And Buffalo. And Buffalo, home of the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Buffalo the Sabres. Sabres. That's right. Exactly. And why are we here? Why are we talking about your module in particular, the Pine Street Spur? Well, I wanted to introduce to the audience um, the genesis behind my module, a little bit of the, where I came up with the plan, and then talk about the benchwork, which was lightweight modular benchwork. Okay, excellent. I'm always interested in lightweight modular benchwork. Okay. It's fascinating. It is. All right, so... Tell us about the Pine Street Spur. What is so fascinating about the Pine Street Spur? Well, I moved into a new home this past summer and I wanted to build a practice layout basically before I took up my home layout again. I thought okay. I could improve my skills. And I kind of went from doing a, um, an ingle nook plan and I wasn't quite happy with the fact that it wasn't prototypical. So I looked online and I came across a blog um, by Trevor Marshall, who you may have heard of, um, for the Pine Street Spur as an achievable layout, something that anybody can do. And I realized it's really just basically an elongated ingle nook. Um, and it fit the space I had, so what I went for it. What, what is an ingle nook? An ingle nook is a particular um, arrangement of track, Right. often used as a switching layout. Okay. You can do a puzzle to it as well. And how, what is the history of the ingle nook? I've only heard of that once or twice. I believe it's British. Oh, okay. It's some yes. sort of a British small switching layout. Exactly. There. Three turnouts, certain moves, certain number of cars. So if somebody was watching this video, yes. where would they find information about the Ingle Nook? Google. Google is your friend. All right. Just Ingle Nook and a whole bunch of websites come up that explain what it is and what it's about. So if you just worked the Google on the internet machine, That's right. you're off to the races. You'll find Ingle Nook and from there you went to the Pine Street Spur. Yes. It's okay. only four turnouts um, in 12 feet, three modules and a switching lead. Um, it worked in my basement, and I decided I could also uh, take it to shows, as we are doing today, um, and use it to demonstrate the progress I'm making as I go from construction, through scenery, through building materials. This is kind of cool. I know, uh, building a uh, practice layout, that's a good idea. How did you, th you come up with that idea? I really wanted to get my son interested in model trains again, so right. I thought the Ingle Nook would be a nice and simple thing for him to do. Um, and then, you know, it just blew up from there. Okay, cool. All right, so this is, what is this, is this uh, like one by fours, is it? They are 18 inches wide. Right. And each section is four feet long. All right. And then there's a foam on top of it or That's some right. sort. That's right. The construction is um, a Luan plywood, Luan, quarter inch thick. Luan plywood. Yep, a birch plywood covered with pink foam. And in the back where I'm not sure people can see, there seems to be some sort of a frame. The framework we could take a look at up front. I've got an example we could flip over. Okay. If that'll work for you. Let's do that. Okay. I'm gonna have to duck under. All right. All right, so this is an example of one of the benchwork pieces. Um, it's quite lightweight. Wow, it's really lightweight. I can really bring them into the uh, shows, one on each hand. Um, if we flip it over, you'll see that it's basically a framework um, Kind of reminds me of an aircraft wing. A solid base, some ribbing, and then these two stiffen it up. So when I thought about what I wanted to do, I looked online and I came across a number of references to lightweight benchwork. Um, the most well-known, I think, is from the Sipping and Switching Society. I don't know if anybody's heard of them out of North Carolina or South Carolina. Um, and it's real nice because it's very rigid, but very light. So, so I'm so. sorry, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the smartest guy in the room. Okay. Which you've probably already identified. But what is the, the actual frame here? What is that made out of? 
the Luan plywood. It is yep. also, it feels like it's thicker than that. It's five millimeter. Really? Yeah. Okay, so just even the outside frame is... Oh, the sorry. The outside ends are qu three quarter inch birch plywood. Oh, okay. For some stiffness, and that's because they also interlock with the pieces together. And the side, this back side, what is, is it the birch plywood as yep. well? Yep. Okay. And so is there a square frame of birch plywood and then the rest of it is this kind of waffle cut thing? It's all just the ends are the thick plywood. Okay. And the rest is all the thin stuff. Okay, cool. So it's like rock solid, eh? It doesn't warp, doesn't shift. I like it a lot for that. And how hard is it to cut all this out? Well, I can show you. Um, if we put this down, all I'll right. show you where we start from. Just put it on the ground. Basically, I started with um, four by eight sheets of plywood. Oh, if you could, thank you. And I had the Home Depot um, rip them to 18 inches wide. Okay. And when I got home, I took the excess and made it three and a half inches for the ribbing. Okay. And basically, I took my drywall square and laid it down the sides and marked the ribbing out in pencil and across and then some angles and then drill the holes as you see there. Right, to for the uh, jigsaw. Right, exactly. Okay. I just used, uh, I'm not sure if people know, this is a Forstner bit. Really good for cutting the holes, better than a hole saw in terms of giving a nice clean cut. Okay. What's and it called again? Forstner. Forstner. Bit. Yes. All right, Forstner bit. Yes. All right. Talukdar Forstner. <laughs> I don't think I've actually ever heard of a Forstner bit. I mean, I've always just called them the big hole bits. <laughs> <laughs> Came across it, and it works beautifully. Okay, excellent. Um, so the holes are the starting point, and then I just basically took my jigsaw. Um, you can see I saved myself some time by cutting two at a time, and then just connected the tangents. Oh, okay, so you cut them two at a time? Well, that's yep. kind of a neat idea. Yep. So I've got, this is the bottoms for two five-foot long modules. All right. All right. So I thought you said the modules were four feet long. These are. Mm -hmm. This is going to be used in the home layout. All right. All right. So so seems like a down. lot of different sizes going on here. Any questions so far? All right. All right. Next piece up. The key I find in assembling it is really having a, a flat surface to work off of, because we want this to be uh, flat, stable, um, not change shape over time. Um, I find the kitchen island works perfect for this when your wife is in bed. Um, and not looking. You're doing this in the kitchen? Yeah. You might be one of the bravest men I've ever met. I have a very understanding wife, too. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, what's your wife's name? Heidi. Heidi, uh, I apologize. I, I apologize, Heidi. I apologize. <laughs> She's already forgiven me. Um, so this is the base. I basically start by gluing and clamping on the ends. Uh, these particular ones don't have the holes drilled in them because I'm not going to be using my home layout and I don't intend to move it, um, but I can align them and then just on shelving brackets. Right. The trick I use to get things square is I basically take this square here and clamp across. And that way I can be sure that before I put some bricks on for weight, they're standing straight. Um, so when you're actually building all of it, it's a bunch of these or other right angles that I've clamped to the pieces to hold them straight up. So starting at the ends, and then taking the rib down the center, and from then on it's a matter of taking the pieces, using my chop saw to cut them to fit exactly, down the sides, and then going across, okay, and so finally... Okay, so this would go that way, like, like Exactly. That? Okay. Pretty much. Right. It's not quite the right size, but, no, but I got that's it. the idea. You put it on the outside. Yep. Okay. Okay. So then I fill in with the cross members, the angled members, and when that is all dried, I'm just using white glue, carpenter's glue for it. So how far, okay, so we know that you have three, this is eight, how far, how wide is this module? 18 inches. Okay. Right. So we know that you have three long braces. Exactly. How often do you cross brace it? I'm planning on three. All right. Three across, so in the middle and then at the uh, 13 and a half inch mark. Okay. And then you put the waffle cut on top of that. Exactly. That must make it incredibly strong, eh? It's stronger than it looks yeah. at first. Oh, absolutely. Yep. I mean, this piece over here seems really solid. Yep. Okay. So, and that leaves us, in the end, with 
a module that looks like these here, right. using masonite on the front to pretty it up some. And then the legs are very simple. They're basically just two by twos. And the trick is, before putting the waffle top on, and ask me how I learned this, is to build a framework here to take the legs. So I can just insert them, and they stand there free. So you're not going to fasten this layer to the wall at all? These particular ones are going to sit on shelf brackets. OK. Yeah. So for your mobile, for your, that you might take to shows and what have you, you have that set up there. That's right. It and took me about 10 minutes to put this up. And do you have the leg braces installed in the one that we were looking at that's kind of finished here? They, we do. Let's yep. pull that back up All here. Right. Let's lay it down. Right here. Oh, okay. So uh, my idea is I'll have one module that has both ends with legs. Right. And from then on, I just piggyback it off. So the, right. the legs don't get fastened in there at all? Uh, no. They just fit into some sort of cup sort of affair? Yes, I've just cut some uh, three-quarter inch plywood to the inside diam diameter to match the legs. And then I place them on. And the trick I found is I'm not attaching them this way so much for level. I use a level underneath, a long level. As you can see, it's unsupported in the middle. Um, that holds them straight together. The two um, pockets or the cylinders that align them yep. hold them for the track wise. And then I just use, I just set them on. And then I shim them if I need to because the legs have leveling right. on the bottom. All right. I mean, you can see if I try and move it, it's. Yeah, that's really solid. It's like pretty it. solid. How is that so solid? Because all you've got is just one leg brace over there. Yep. How is that so solid? Well, I guess probably the trick is two things. The level I have underneath that's clamped to the framework. Okay. So that's the two pieces are held together tightly. Right. And I, I, I should go back. I do have one brace here that is clamped to the edge. So that one point gives it the stability here, and that's carried through to the rest. So you don't have to have, a, do you, like if you had like a 20 unit layout, you wouldn't have like 10 levels, would you? You have a level clamped under here. Oh, no, that's right. <laughs> because I'm limited to this. Right. And I like the open look of it. Okay, okay. It's exactly. the same feature. So, but, but, okay, my one of my pet peeves yes. is, you know, freestanding layouts that have a wobble to them. Like, okay. I like them to be rock solid. Mm -hmm. So how, how in the world does this stay solid? If, if there were, say, 10 modules, how does this stay solid with just one leg brace or a couple of leg braces? The leg braces can be... A fixed on permanently, right. or with screws, let's say, or bolts. There's nothing stopping anybody from doing that. Um, we can maybe take a shot of the end of the module okay. and talk about a piece that contributes to that. You'll see how there is two holes. Um, I've taken this from the Sipping and Switching Society. Each one is a one inch diameter hole. And then I went to the Home Depot and got some uh, aluminum tubing right? and basically cut that to length. Put four slices in the end and bent it in as a lead-in. And those then align the modules very nicely. Um, the idea is to clamp across those. Okay. So you'll find on the joints, I do have C-clamps or squeeze clamps right, yeah, yeah. that I'm holding them together. The level underneath just helps me not have a leg in the middle there. Okay, just for this particular display. Exactly. All right, what else do we need to know about this? Well, we can talk about the track going across. Let's go across. back to, yeah, let's, let's we're <coughs> done with the construction of the. All right. What, put this back up here just for let everybody Sorry. see it. What is this track supposed to represent? This is the end of the spur. Uh, we can maybe talk about what I've done here. Sure. Um, the, I got the track arrangement straight off of Google Maps. So basically, I went to Google Maps, printed out on 8.5 by 11 sheets the entire section. Okay. Taped them together laid them down, and I had my track. I had the building layout, everything was there. The nice thing about this layout is I can build it full size in the 12 feet, so there's no compression going on. The only accommodation I had to make was to add the switching lead off the end, otherwise it's full size. Okay, All right. excellent. All right, cool. All so right. the buildings are laid out with gator foam as the base. All right. This yeah. gives me an idea as I'm building it where everything's going to go. Um, and then I've used this pink styrofoam built up in layers 
to get the different track elevations. So there's a two inch wide or two inch thick base under each of them. And then you can buy um, quarter inch thick styrofoam and fan fold mm -hmm. that I cut. And that whether I use one or two layers on there, I can go up or down. Quarter inch styrofoam and what? Fan fold. It's just a big, long, folded oh, okay, piece right. of, yes, I've seen of that, that far styrofoam. OK. And th so this foam right here seems to be about an inch thick? Two. Two inch thick. Let's see. We've got the two inch styrofoam. And then the f this particular one for the factory is another inch on top. OK. All right, excellent. Okay. And this comes in four by eight sheets, doesn't it? It does. Do you get a cut before you? No, nope, I do it at home. Oh, yeah? Do you That's have a pickup truck or something? Minivan. A minivan, minivan. okay. Minivan. Yep. I have a story about one time, the very first time I bought a sheet of this, and I went outside, and it's like windy, and it's it was ugly after that. It can that. be difficult. Yeah. <laughs> I, went out, I went out of the Home Depot with one sheet and quickly ended up with two. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have a question. We have a question. So this particular kind of bench work then, is it meant just for a point-to-point -point operation or can you modify it somehow to make it a continuous loop or wh how do you use it? I will be using it to go around the walls of my basement. So by putting it on shelf brackets, I can remove it if necessary and I have room for furniture underneath. But the idea is to basically link the modules up around the wall. How, how are you accommodating for curves then? Well, the nice thing is, um, it's flexible. So if I start, let me pull out one of these. Take this. I can cut the tops out of a four by eight sheet in a nice big arc or wave if I want to make the edge of the bench work non-linear. Um, and then I can bend these to match. So. so you can actually make a curved module. Correct. By bending those. Yep. It just becomes a matter of being able to clamp it in place on the wood. And then you'd put your foam on top of that. And okay, right. but I think for the people that are watching this clinic, which is really cool, actually this is really neat, um, how would they cut the waffle cut on a curved module? Have you given that any thought? Table saw. Uh, sorry, a hand. Um, how would they lay, they'd lay it? They'd lay it out. I guess you'd, you'd lay it out. You'd build the, the frame first. Well, you would cut the top with right. a jigsaw. Okay. Right, in a curve. All right, whatever curve you want. Right. Okay. Then I would put on the ends, which will be straight, right. where they match. And then I would do this exact same thing. I would start laying out the center rib with this in place. Um, I like to use just stone pavers because they're nice and heavy and don't move. So you can hold them in place position-wise, as well as keeping them flat with those. Um, and then once the first one dries, do the other two or do them all, and then the ribs in between will keep things from racking. Okay. Make sense? Yes. Okay. Uh, for those of you who don't know what stone pavers are, that's the American equivalent of unilock brick. That's what we call it in Canada, is unilock brick, and I would, I would be interesting to know what it's called in Britain. Uh, okay. okay, what else do we need to know about this? Well, um, once you've got the base built, um, I glue the styrofoam on, and then it comes time to lay the track. And I, I gave myself a lot of worry at first on how I'm going to lay the track across the, the joints. Actually, so I actually have a very good question. Can we go back behind? Certainly. Behind here? I'll duck under again. Get this on camera, Tyler. Next time we'll change sides and I can just walk around. So okay. how do you change the elevation here on, with the foam? Well, the lowest track is on the two inch right. foam, and then I've built it up with the layers of the quarter inch. All right. So there's two layers down here at the highest point, and then it goes up to one inch foam here for the factory interior. And there's, so there's different levels. It seems very smooth here though, like how you built it up underneath. And then I just planed it off okay. with a rasp. All right. Was that, gonna, was that messy? Not really. I had the vacuum running Okay. right there. I apologize, Heidi. I just, I'm so sorry about all this. Uh, okay, so now, this okay. is, that's cool. So you've built, you've built that up yep. to the different elevations. So we've got it ready for track. Um, because it's a, a layout I wanted to have done quickly, I went with um, Pico Electrofrog turnouts um, and Code uh, 70 Microengineering FlexTrack. Okay. 
I've glued it all down just with white glue, really simply. Um, and at the joints, what I've done is put a piece of two by two underneath the joint here and replace the plastic ties with um, copper clad ties, which I've then epoxied down to the wood. That way, um, they're really solidly held in place, don't move around, and if I can clamp it up the same way every time, the track should be in the same place every time. In fact, I've cut it right through a turnout here, um, yeah, and so that. far it's worked out just fine. All right, excellent. Okay. All right. I think the end shot of that module there would give you an idea of the 2x2 two two and the track glued to it right there with the um, PC board ties. So the whole layout consists of one long factory building in multiple old sections, you know, built up over time. Sure, yeah, yeah. So there's the long warehouse here. There's a raised portion that's a little newer where the uh, boxcars were loaded. This is basically the unloading of the raw materials for the paper mill. And then the end section there um, is partially in the street and with some truck loading going on as well. So it's basically 12 feet by 18 inches. Exactly. All right. Excellent. So we're switching with two SW1500RS, just waiting for those models to come out. Um, and then just a small number of cars, but enough spots to keep things interesting. So did you know about the Pine Street Spur before you started, or did you just stumble across it somehow? Just stumbled across it on uh, the Achievable Layouts blog. Trevor Marshall has a wonderful blog with ideas for layouts. Okay, so is it basically small layouts? Is it? Yeah, things you can do um, you know, in small spaces, very quickly, get running quickly, All right. Um, but prototypically based. We should be interviewing him after you. That would be excellent. What else do we need to know about this? I think we pretty much covered it. Pretty much. Um, any questions? As you're laying the tracks, you want to make those things line up as you've done with the 2x2 two two and, yep. and the, the PC boards. Do you line that up, build the piece, and then lay the track and cut it? I put together the modules, mm -hmm. had them all lined up to my satisfaction, make mm -hmm. sure they were flat and level and everything. Yep. I laid the track plan out, and I did the cutting before I, laid, I glued it down. Oh, okay. Right. I could use a, a cutoff tool in a Dremel to do that, but I found it just as easy to lay it out, mark it, cut it, and then glue it down. Okay, so you can be, you can be that precise. All right, cool. Yeah. Um, with the um, PC board ties soldered under in here, basically the, the position and the curvature is fixed. So mm -hmm. once I had that in place, I could take it, cut off the excess, and put that down. Excellent. So and just it solder it down. Yeah. 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 Now, what do you fasten the track to the foam with? White glue. What, really? Yep. Just white glue? Yep. The white glue will adh adhere to plastic? Yes. Really? Has so far. So when you go to lay your ballast, you'll use white glue and water to mix? Or you? matte medium. Matte medium. Okay. Yep. All right. Yeah. All right. I would have thought yellow glue for that, laying down the track, but white glue, eh? It disappears. Um, it's something I've done some research online as well, All figured right. out, and people have done it. I had thought when you go to wet the ballast and so on that it could soften up, but nobody talked about that, so we'll find out for sure. Yeah, exactly. That would have been my first thought. Would yep. I would have gone with yellow glue, but things have changed so much in the, in the hobby over the last 40 years. I mean, there's so many great things you can do now that we wouldn't have done even 20 years ago. Sure. You know, I mean, this, this module is so light. So when you're working on it at home, how high do you have it? I have it at uh, basically, at, well, this, yeah, a little higher than this. Really, when you're working Armpit on it? Armpit height, yep. Wow, okay. I can take it down anytime I want yeah, to sure. work on, so it's easy in that. So now tell us a little bit about your home layout. How big is it going to be? The home layout is a model of the Waterloo Spur, which is another Canadian national branch line. Right. Um, it's going to go around the outside walls of the entire basement. Oh, neat. 18 inches wide. Um, same construction, basically. And of course, the theory of that is, if you ever moved... I can take it with me. You can take it with which you. Which I have done. Okay. I have the modules from our old house... Right. ...that I was able to take apart, move into the new room, and where the room was a little shorter, I've taken out a module, cut it with my table saw, and put it back in place, and just lay the track across. Okay. And were you modeling the same thing in your old house? Yes. I got to the stage of laying the track. 
um, on the baseboard, basically looking like this when we moved. All right, and of course with the modules, if you ever want to change, you can just pull out a module and exactly. start again. If I feel I didn't do a good enough job, I can just you know, well, take think, off the top. I think I'll be in judge of that. I'll leave that to you. I'll come over and I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll determine that. I'm sure you have done that. I'm sure you've done an excellent job. This is all very fascinating. I love this whole idea with the waffle foam of building up the different grades and all that. I mean, this is, this is great. Uh, excellent job. Well done. Thank you very much.